And for more on this, let's bring in Andrew Bush, who's an economist based in Chicago. Hello, Andrew. Thanks for joining us today. We really appreciate it. Uh, firstly, uh, this is a huge jump in Bitcoin. Tell me, how much uh, has this got to do with the virus and the drop in currencies uh, around the world? Well, certainly is related to the drop in the value of the U.S. dollar, and it's been pitched as an alternative, just like gold has been. But it's also uh, been seen as an alternative to uh, what's happening with risk assets in the sense when there's uh, military danger or anarchy or when Congress gets invaded by a mob, uh, people have a tendency to turn to gold and to Bitcoin. All right. And Andrew, can we expect uh, this trend to continue and if it does how far do you see it going well it's up a thousand percent since last march so it's hard to see it going up a lot more from here but you have to remember it's a very limited amount of liquidity with bitcoin unlike gold which can be mined um you, bitcoin can be mined as well different kind of terminology but there's a limited amount of it and right now because there's so many day punters or traders it's just on rocket fuel at this point and it's so volatile so it's hard to say where it's going to go from here but it's doubled since mid December. So it's really just incredibly uh, volatile and it's also incredibly speculative. So if people are looking to buy it, I mean, just remember, just keep a small portion in your portfolio. Sounds good. And uh, Andrew, tell me, you mentioned that there's only a certain amount of Bitcoin. What uh, happens then when that runs out? Well, it's only so much can be produced. So if you think of it like gold, like it would be like having a limit to the amount of gold that will be extracted out of the ground. That's the way I would look at it. And certainly the demand for it is going up when we see people like Square and PayPal and actually the more adoption by institutional investors like Mass Mutual, uh, an insurance company in the United States. These are all things that are driving big demand for for a product or a alternative investment that has a limited liquidity. So it can get extraordinarily crazy here. And you did mention, Andrew, this uh, drop in hard currency, really focusing there on the US. Tell me, why is it that we are seeing such a drop? The US has always been so, so strong. It has been, but certainly our Federal Reserve, the central bank in the United States, is pumping in a tremendous amount of liquidity. And it's also seen that by, with a uh, Democrat Congress and a Democrat president, we're going to see a lot of uh, f fiscal spending, uh, even more than what we've seen recently. And we're going to see inflation rise. You've seen the 10-year yield in the United States start to get up. It's about 1.1 percent. And even though that's really low, we're starting to see it climb. So it's an indication of inflation expectations in the United States. So as long as you have all those things kind of going on and the world is relatively safe, then we see the dollar sell off. All right. And tell me, uh, with Biden uh, about to take office there in Washington, uh, how do you expect this to affect, let's say, Bitcoin and also a hard currency there? Yeah, I'd say it's going to be interesting because um, under uh, certain uh, rules within the House and the Senate under budget reconciliation, they can raise taxes even with just slim majority. So they're going to do a massive spending bill. They're going to try to eliminate the corporate tax or raise the corporate tax, I should say, from 21 percent to 28 percent. So there's some headwinds here for investors in normal uh, assets like stocks. So we want to keep that in mind. But there's going to be a large amount of spending which could drive inflation. All right. And Andrew, uh, finally, tell me, say someone wants to go out and potentially purchase some Bitcoin if they've got the cash, of course. Uh, what are your tips for them uh, as an advisor? Yeah, just a small amount of into your portfolio. This is the most speculative investment that you can do. So just be very careful with it. I wouldn't go out and, you know, expect that you're going to see continued gains like we have. But if you're willing to take that risk, then, you know, allocate just a small amount of your portfolio. That's what I've been advising uh, my clients overall. I'm not an investment advisor, but I just talk from the standpoint of risk and portfolio mix here. So, again, be very careful with this. Uh, but but obviously, if you want to get on board and you have a real high FOMO with it, then go ahead. I think a lot of people do have FOMO. Uh, <laughs> Andrew Bush there, thank you so much for your time and uh, coming on to break all of this down for us. We really appreciate it. You bet.